So Savitri was addressed as the traveler in the chariot of the sun. Surya Ratha, chariot of the sun, Surya Ratha. And she is riding the golden chariot. That is how she found Satyavan in the Shalva forest. She was driving her own chariot, the chariot of the sun, and she found Satyavan. Of course, at that time, she did not know that there is a doom waiting for him. One year after their yawning together, she was moving in the ninth cloud or whatever cloud you want to say. <laughs> and she was extremely happy. Now it is the same lady who is chasing death in the darkness of the night. Now the chariot of the sun cannot move in the darkness of the night without making it bright. It has to bring light also to the darkness. So while she was chasing Satyavan in the chariot of the sun to find, while moving to find Satyavan in the chariot of the sun, she has to also find Satyavan now again in the depths of darkness. And that is why she is driving her chariot, chariot of the sun, Surya Ratha. The golden light, the supramental light, has to also enter into the depths of darkness. It is necessary if the true supramental union between Satyavan and Savitri is to be present in the mortal world also on earth, Mrityu Loka. Therefore, she is the worshipper of that love, riding the chariot of the sun even in the darkness. Therefore, she is a high priestess. the worshipper or the god of love, even in the depths of darkness. In the holy fancy is a shrine, but this gentleman thinks that she is moving in her fancy, holy, sacred fancy. In the holy fancy is shrine, who is a magic ritual in earth's house worshipest ideal and eternal love. What is she doing here? According to him, she is simply worshipping ideal and eternal love with the routine rituals where? In the earth's house. In the earth's house it cannot be, but that is what she is doing. Therefore, it is a fancy shrine. It cannot be. Therefore, it is, it is her fancy which is making her do all that, you see. High priestess in the holy fancy shrine, who with a magic ritual in earth's house, worships ideal and eternal love. What is this love that thought has deified? It is your thought, your imagination, your mental formation, which has given rise to this love. What is this love after all? You have made a god of this love, made an idol, murti of this love, this sacred vision and immortal 
meet you have made it a legend you have made it a myth because of your thought because of your mind because of your brain there is nothing like really love according to him see i precise say this is a very peculiar construction first he is telling the poet is telling us she is a traveler and from the image of a traveler he is shifting immediately that she is a priestess shifting immediately from the traveler she is a traveler going but then how suddenly she becomes a priestess you see so that seems to be a bit of incongruent description a traveler becoming a priestess immediately but if you see the traveler in the long run as i said just now that she is the one who is carrying moving in all the past of the world to worship love whether it is in the mortal world whether it is on earth whether it is in the darkness of the night whether following the path of yama she is a traveler always looking for that god of love and therefore she is a priestess so it is a bit of a long drawn connection between traveler and priestess you have any other explanation <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat one fancy? High priestess in the holy fancy shrine. One fancy. Fancy imagination. You are ideal. You are kind of an illusion. Fancy you are talking. I, I heard she. Oh, her imagination. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It is your mental Same formation. Thing. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So you all that you are thinking yeah. is only your imagination. Uh -huh. Fancies. Who therefore. she is doing magic ritual so he is uh, very sarcastic very sarcastic also yeah. in making that kind of a statement yeah i say what is this love yeah. that you have made a god of him yeah, yeah. prema murti <laughs> made an image murti image idol deified you see love this sacred legion and therefore and you are calling it sacred holy very piously pure in that in other words he is taking here in his whole uh, passage the image of a worshipper in a temple the rituals which are done the puja which are done the way in which you wave the light and do this and do that offer flowers offer food all that kind of a thing See? that has become a legend therefore it is sacred for you holy sacred and immortal myth but according to him it is a myth he does not recognize that it is also a symbol it is a legend and a symbol you see it is a legend and a symbol you see it is a conscious learning of thy flesh yeah it is your nerves your glands which are crying for relationship you see, you see. it is a conscious yearning of thy flesh it is a glorious burning that i know a rose of dreams splendor petaling the mind so it is mind which has put this rose flower on the tree of love <laughs> a great red rapture and torture of thy heart red rapture red rose of love and torture of thy heart obviously that love itself becomes a torture 
because the rose has thorns <laughs> and therefore it becomes a torture. A rose of dream splendor, fiddling the mind, a great red rapture and torture of the heart. A sudden transfiguration of thy days, it passes and the world is as before. You think that you are loving somebody, but the moment he is absent, you will weep, cry, shout, go into tantrums for a few days and get quieted down and the routine starts. <laughs> Where is love? The routine starts. All the tantrums are over and you fall into the routine, you see. And world is as before, you see. A ravishing edge of sweetness and of pain. Ravishing, extremely beautiful, extremely attractive, edge of sweetness, that is love. And at the same time, pain associated with that. Sweetness and pain, they go, they go together. Together with rapture and torture. A thrill in its yearning makes it seem divine. When you are in the company of your lover, you believe in the company of your lover, then everything makes seem divine. <laughs> yeah. A golden bridge across the roar of the ears, roar of the ears. A golden bridge across the roar of the ears. You can see the sound of the waves coming here. And the sound is becoming more distinct with the alteration of R. Bridge across roar ears. <laughs> the alteration of R makes the sound really distinct, very really powerful. A golden bridge across the road of the years. We can scan this line, a gold and bridge, second foot, AM, AM, across third AM, the road, fourth AM, of the ears, and a pist. These are the five feet, four amps and an epistles. A golden bridge across the road of the years. So you can see the rushing of the waves forward moving, you see. Roar is loud noise, of course. So the waves are coming and dashing against something, against the shore, for instance. You hear the loud noise. So this roar stands for the noise of the waves here actually, the flood, the river, and therefore the bridge. As if the bridge is there, the river is flowing under the bridge, and the rushing of the sound is heard. That itself becomes a golden bridge, a cord tying thee to eternity. So that bridge becomes a cord that you are linked up with eternity. A thrill in its yearning makes it seem divine. A golden bridge across the road. I don't know how this fellow knows all this. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he never came to earth, never enjoyed the company of a woman, and still he's <laughs> talking about all these things, you see. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A thrill in this yearning which is seem divine, a golden bridge across the road of the year, a cord time be to eternity. And yet, how brief and frail. See, all this joy of life is so short, a brief living and frail, very fragile, little break moment, see. How soon is spent this treasure wasted with the God or man? This happy closeness as a soul to soul, this honey of the body's companionship. 
this heightened joy, this ecstasy in the brain, this strange illumination of the sense. He had described perfectly the human relationship. <laughs> Without having really experienced by taking a human birth. See, he knows all these details fully. This heightened joy, this ecstasy in the veins, this strange. You see, he is talking even on the physical level. You see, in the veins, yeah, that relationship is there. You feel the thrill even in the veins in the physical body. You see, so he knows all that. How? I don't know. <laughs> and therefore, if Satyavan had lived, love would have died. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If Satyavan had lived, love would have died. But Satyavan is dead and love shall live. Therefore you are crying, weeping for him. You see, when you are in his company, you forget about him completely. There is no love at all, you see. A little while in thy sad breast, until his face and body fade on memory's wall, where other bodies, other faces come. Very cruel, you see. <laughs> very, very light. Uh, yeah. 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 I think I think he had lived in Europe for a long time. <laughs> see? Yeah. 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 His face and body fit out on memory's wall. Forget about the whole thing. And then again, you take some other person as your companion and move on. Forget. Or you have got children, you, be, you get busy with the children and forget about your lover, you see. This is human love. Very modern. Yeah, very modern. <laughs> I think it has been there for eternity. <laughs> it has always been like that. <laughs> and. And that you call divine. <laughs> See, yeah, makes it same for you. <laughs> yeah. Where other bodies, other faces come. When love breaks suddenly into the life, at first man steps into a world of the sun. So you are in the sunlight, you are in the bright sunshine. When is now, of course, it's a, at first man steps into a world of the sun. Man, he doesn't say woman. <laughs> in his passion, he feels his heavenly element. But only a fine sunlit patch of earth, the marvelous aspect, took of heaven's outburst. And then the cruel line with all that. The snake is there and the worm in the heart of the rose. And the snake is there, the snake is there and the worm in the heart of the rose. You have got a rose and in the heart of that rose, what do I got? A worm and a snake. The cruelty, all the evil is there in that love. This line is a very beautiful line, very unique kind of line. The snake is there. Long, short, long, short, long. I am, I am. The snake is there. There gets a kind of an emphasis, therefore it is I am. Normally, the snake is there. There doesn't take the accent, but here it does see, to some extent. And a worm in the heart of the rose. You have to read this together. And the worm in the heart of the rose. So what we have really here is two ants followed by three anapists. And the worm in the heart of the rose, three and a paste. And these two, I am, I am. It's a kind of a swift moving, forward rushing line. 
the snake is there and the worm with the heart to the rose. See, it keeps on constantly beating that. And the charm of this poetry, of this construction, of this metrical merit comes entirely because, you see, this is a line with all monosyllabic words. Each word, just say, the snake is there and the worm in the heart of the rose. All monosyllabic words. Monosyllabic. It's not, see, only one, one syllable. Only one syllable, you see. It, it is that which gives a kind of a power to the metrical formulation. You see, for instance, now here, the marvelous aspect of the heavens outburst. You can see the crowding there of boils. But here, the snake is there and the worm in the heart of the rose. <laughs> So that is that which gives really a power to the line also. The worm and the snake, they become more powerful because of the monosyllabic nature of the line also. So while you are talking of love and all that, what is there? There is a snake, there is a worm, which is going to eat into the rose. A word, a moment's act can slay the God. All your imaginations, all your love, etc., etc., they are there, but you don't realize that there is a snake and there is a worm. And they can, in a moment, slay even the God. The God of love, you see. Now, of course, slay the God. It's a very powerful phrase. Very puzzling phrase also. <laughs> Can the God be slain? Gods are immortal. You cannot kill them. You cannot kill them. A word, a moment, that can slay the God. But then he says, Precarious is his immortality. He is immortal, all right, but very shaky. <laughs> because the worm and the worm can cut that immortality, can slay it. In other words, in the outer dimensions, this is a very powerful snake, very powerful worm that it can even cut into the life of God. God becomes helpless. He has a thousand ways to suffer and die. That is what God does then. Love cannot live by heavenly foot alone. Only on sap of earth can it survive. It needs grief and suffering and hunger to live. Sap of earth. The mortality is liquid, fluid. Without that, mortality is fluid. It cannot survive. A word, a moment's act can slay the God. A word, a moment's act. Word from where? A moment's act whose? Can slay the God. After all, he is a vital God who is living here. And a more powerful expression can destroy the vital God. It is as if the vital God becomes asuric. 
and a divine power can destroy it. A word, a moment that can slay the God, precarious is his immortality. He has a thousand ways to suffer and die. So it's not one way by which he can suffer and die. Only on sap of earth can it survive. And therefore, your love, it is that love, for thy passion with essential want, refined. And that is what you call love. If that is love, if that is your God, then he can be destroyed by the snake and the worm. A hunger of the body and the heart. So it is both physical and emotional. It is your, that physical hunger, your emotional hunger, that you call love. What is that? It's a God who can be slain. Thy want can tire and seize or turn elsewhere. A love may meet a dire and pitiless end by bitter treason. Well, this is not uncommon. Love meeting pitiless end by treason. <laughs> which is not uncommon in the vital relationships. Or wrath with cruel wounds separate. Or thy unsatisfied will to others depart when first love joy lies stripped and slain. A dull indifference replaces fire. So you become indifferent then. Your burning fire which are there, that passion which are there, red glow of relationship which are there, that gets suppressed. Depart when first love's joy lies stripped and slain. A dull indifference replaces fire. You get tired of that relationship. You forget it. You want to get out of it, you see. Or an endearing habit, imitable love. An outward and uneasy union lasts or the routine of a life's compromise. Well, that is what the human relationship is between the lover and the beloved. He is there at the same time. Well, let us live together. We don't agree with each other. We don't get along with each other. All right. But still, let us live together, you see, and goes on, you see. As if a kind of a helpless need is there and you compromise everything because of that. An outward and uneasy union lasts. Or the routine, or the routine of a life's compromise. Where when the seed of oneness had been cast into a semblance of spiritual ground by a divine adventure of heavenly powers to strive constant association without joy. So they strive, they remain, but without joy. That is the relationship. Two egos straining in a single leash. So you are caught in the same leash, two egos. And that, that leash you call love. That single leash you call love. You are tied, these two egos are tied by that love. Two minds we are divided by their jarring thoughts. You constantly argue with each other. Still, you do not separate from each other. Two spirits disjoint forever separate. So that is the nature of human love. With all glorious dreams, you come together. And finally, a stage may come when you divorce and everything is gone. Thus, it is ideal falsified. You came with love, you do this thing, that thing, etc., etc., under the name of a name, love. And finally, what happens? That love gets falsified in man's world, in the human world, in the passion of emotions. Trivial, somber, Disillusion comes, 
life's harsh reality stares at us so life's harsh reality stares at us so heavens our adjourned flees into bodiless time no i don't know why he is lecturing into savitri all this <laughs> the savitri understand that thing the one hint is enough for her but he is kind of enjoying this description but then his whole emphasis is elaboration is the rasa of relationship is by elaborating well this is what you are you live in this world in this manner heavens our adjourned flees into bodiless time goes away you see you have come together that is the heavens our but then it flies away disappears death save the from this and save satyavan all this gloomy thing of human relationship which is there how that can be salvaged there is no human medicine human cure human remedy to solve this problem here the only cure is according to him that saves this relationship i am there to save you from this <laughs> sad therefore is operating you see so i am the master you are caught in this misery but look i am here to save you that saves thee from this and saves satyavan is happy there you also be happy there he now is safe delivered from himself delivered from himself he was so much attached to savitri that soon it would have become a torturing relationship for him had it continued in this manner because this is what had happened happens everywhere but now i am saving him he is safe with me he is now safe with me you see because of that delivered from himself well actually maybe he became a little mistake also he is now he now is safe delivered from sabitri <laughs> not himself <laughs> he travel to silence and felicity according to him living in the world of death is felicity so he is now safe happy safe that he is no more now attached to savitri therefore delivered from himself he is no more attached to savitri call him not back to the treacheries of earth and the poor petty life of animal man what a commentary on human life <laughs> poor petty life of animal man <laughs> and this is what we are enjoying see poor petty life of animal man but it's a fact also is a fact also is everything he said is a fact yeah <laughs> there is not only this <laughs> yeah and the poor petty life of animal man now he says here call him not back so savitri you are rather making satyavan suffer more by calling him back don't do that he is happy he is in the world of silence and felicity don't call him back to the world of torture or suffering to this petty life of animal man don't call him back for that you see call him not back to the treacheries of earth now this is a very beautiful thing see how careful this yama is there death is there in his words choices of words he said calling not back to the treacheries of earth he doesn't say calling not back 
to the treacherous earth. <laughs> Call him not back to the treacheries of earth. Call him not back to the treacherous earth. Earth is treacherous. So he makes a very fine distinction that the earth is not treacherous. That does not mean that there are not treacheries on earth. Earth is not treacherous. But there are but there are treacheries on earth. That's a different matter. Earth by itself is not treacherous. It's a very deep occult sense in this place. There is a very deep occult sense. Treacheries of earth. No? <laughs> he doesn't say treacherous earth. No. Metrically, it would stand. Treacherous earth would stand. Metrically, poetically also. What it means that? Well, earth is there. Earth has all these treacheries. There is the snake and the worm and all those things are there. All these treacheries are there. It also means that earth has felicities. Call him not back to the felicities of earth. You see, earth can have felicities also. He doesn't say felicitous earth. He doesn't say treacherous earth. He said treacheries of earth, felicities of earth. Hmm. Now, this is the depth of yogic poetry, how each phrase can convey so many, in a single phrase, treacheries of earth, it means that there are other aspects of earth also. A common man, an ordinary poet would have said, treacherous earth. Hmm. Call him not back to the treacheries of earth. See, this, the line could be scanned. Call him. That is a trucky, long shot. Not back, short, long, I am. To the trach, trach, I am. A raise, pyrrhic, of earth. That is how you scan it. Call him, not back, to the trach, raise, of earth. You have followed? No? You have followed? The scanning? How will you put the beat? Call him is one foot. That is a trocky. Not back. That is short long. I am. To the treach is the third foot. That is an apist. And then a is Short, short, that is the pyrrhic of earth. Again, an I am. So the metrical variation is also very beautiful here. Call him not back to the treachery. So while he is talking of treacheries, yet metrically the line is very musical. <laughs> very sweet, very harmonious line, metrically, you see, very balanced line. It can be beautiful. The treachery can be beautiful metrically, you see. <coughs> Calling not bad to the treacheries of earth. So how the, the sound will modulate that, you see. And the poor petty life of animal man in my vast tranquil spaces, let him sleep. Why you are worried? Why do you want to bring him, take him back to the treacheries of earth? Treacheries of earth, you want to take him back. Who is going to cause treacheries to him? You yourself will be responsible. You will become treacherous to him tomorrow. <laughs> Your love is like that, human love, that itself will become treacherous tomorrow. That is the treachery of earth. So forget about that. In my vast, tranquil spaces, let him sleep. In harmony, with a mighty 
harsh of death in harmony with the mighty harsh of death that is what is according to him in the harsh there is the mighty in the mighty harsh there is the harmony according to death but actually this is an oxymoron there cannot be harmony in death harmony and death they cannot go together therefore it is an oxymoron two opposite things coming together in harmony with the mighty hush of death where love lies slumbering in the breast of peace where in his tranquil world and thou so let him remain with me and you and thou go back alone to the frail poor world <laughs> miserable world see to the treacheries of earth enjoy them and thou go back alone to the frail world just i the heart with knowledge make it pure get punished or whatever you call it just i is the heart with knowledge and learn things there and make it grow in that way anhood and see so all the cobwebs they put remove that thing thy nature raise into clear living heights now you are not able to see the clear living heights because you have become passionate emotion has made it hazy go back live quietly the heaven burst view from unimagined peaks for then sorry for when dog give it thy spirit to a dream this is what you are doing you are giving your spirit to the dream soon hard necessity will smite thee away purest delight began and it must end you are delight began and it must end because of this poor petty life of animal man on earth yama seems to be partial yama seems to be partial he loves satyavan more than charitri yeah. yeah because you are living i can't I, i don't have hold on you so you go back you live tomorrow i will swallow you up also and you will say and also try yeah for his job yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and thou go back alone to the frail world because she was chasing him she was <coughs> after him and therefore satyavan cannot come along with you impossible he is now in my possession done all that you can do is you have to go back because as of now i have not taken away your soul so i don't have hold on you i can't drag you into this one i can't kill you there like that you have to go back actually in a certain sense every death is an action of suicide yes every death right because we decide yes ah. <laughs> every every death is an act <laughs> ultimately when you are about to die you say that you have to say okay you can take away my soul until then nobody can touch you in the last moment it happens like that i am tired man never said that he wanted to no satya wanted to say while i die kiss me <laughs> kiss me while i die he had already succumbed But 
Every act of death is a suicide. You have to give your final consent. But the, so you, when you arrive, no, the, the awful logic is that he will not take it away unless you consent. So who consent? The soul. Yeah. The soul. No, the soul. Yeah, the soul. Yeah, she has to consent finally. Yeah. Then only the soul is taken away, yeah, and that is the act of suicide. Yeah. <laughs> suicide of the soul. No? Yeah, the, the, suicide means the same thing, you know. You have to give consent. Now let me be free. Let me go away. I'm tired. You see. Ma, Satyavan, Satyavan soul will never He he did say. I'm free. He go away. Yeah. Let me uh, while I die. <laughs> he said because he must die, and she must go and deliver him from the death. Uh. Oh, while, while I die, you see, say that every act is an act of suicide that we see. That you can prevent only when you are powerful enough. When your thing is everything is under your control. Death cannot touch you. You succumb to death. You yield to death. At that moment. You have not done enough sadhana. You have not acquired enough strength to say no. I'm sorry. Go away. <laughs> now, basically, the, the whole logic is it is oh, it is the opposite way. Oh, her logic is like you told that the realized persons they can say no to death, but till now, uh, uh, all the realized persons they have been succumbed to death. Yeah, they they realized. But how they accepted it? No, you have to say finally. And that's even that's even in the other. even in the Gita, you say. That's what. That's another per, the person choice. It's a law of yeah. this earthly nature. Whatever what reason it may be, he is tired. He wants to have a renewed life. He wants to make progress. So please take me away. All all that I could do in my present life, whatever progress I could make in this life. That is over. I can't make any further progress. Therefore, you please take me away so that I can come back and make further progress. So it may be a kind of a strategy of the soul to say, "Let me die." The strategy of the supreme. Of the soul. Of the soul. <laughs> of the soul. Of the individual. He cannot touch. Death cannot touch you until then. And thou go back alone to that frail world. See, obviously, but it's a fact. That's the awkward law. I mean, you cannot die. You will not die if you say, "I don't want to die." In fact, that is the difference. That is the difference. I can withdraw. I can draw. I can die. I can withdraw. So you are making a choice, depending upon how much sadhana, how much tapasya you have done, how much yoga you have done. Sri Aurobindo's withdrawal, the mother's withdrawal. It is that kind of a thing you see. The yogi is withdrawal. See, it is not death. Yes. That is not death. That no. Is the vocabulary yeah. is But you say, let me die, you see. <laughs> Finally, you succumb. Because you have not done enough tapas here. But for an ordinary human being, yeah. they don't choose. They cannot choose. Yeah. Well, uh, well, so he is doing all unconsciously. Unconsciously. Yeah, that's a different that's matter. But basically, the occult logic is unless you say that, you will not be taken away. The important point is that I means death does not come and just snatch you away like that. You have to say yes, please take me away. So, 
you meet a tiger you meet a tiger in the beginning in the beginning <laughs> the mother has narrated this yeah yeah you the, the tiger particularly tiger you see yeah uh, you uh, uh, feel uh, frightened you want to come back and all that thing but then a moment comes when you want the tiger to eat you you want the tiger to eat you then the tiger eats you yes yes <laughs> you have met a tiger <laughs> Huh? Not, not we. Not our soul. Not our soul. Whatever. No, it's not whatever because we are functioning here. No, at that point, yeah, at that point, you, 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 see, you oppose, you fight, you quarrel, you want to run away, and all that kind of a thing. Finally, you become happy to become a part of the tiger. And you eat, you give up. In fact, the mother has narrated a story. Yeah. yeah. You know that, no? Yeah. <laughs> that uh, uh, one person along with two or three friends they were moving in the forest and then one one of them was seized by a tiger and the tiger was dragging the person the person was frightened scared and all that thing when they saw other friends saw the person being dragged by the tiger they rushed towards the tiger and the man who was being dragged by the tiger and then the tiger got scared left the person and went away then these people asked that man what did you feel and he said that i was feeling extremely happy that tiger was taking me into himself why can you explain what does mean this you become a part of a bigger vital bigger vital huh? you will become a part of it <laughs> so that is <laughs> yeah that is why the deer enjoys being eaten in the last moment with the tiger it becomes a man also you see this is what mother has narrated the story you see so it is it is ultimately that thing you know in words he was about to be consumed with tiger and he was feeling extremely happy but then suddenly something intervened and the tiger left him away and gone for when thou givest thy spirit to a dream soon hard necessity with might thee away purest delight began and it must end thou too shall know the heart no end to swinging the cradle soul moved in eternal sea this is satyaman tomorrow a day will come when you will know that there is no anchor for your soul your ship will also sink thou too shall know thy heart no anchor swinging that there is no anchor at all there the cradle soul moved tied with ropes and all that thing to the eternal seas vain are the cycles of thy brilliant mind i am there and i will put everything to not all that is made of mind made by mind vain are the cycles of the brilliant mind i renounce forgetting joy and hope and tears the passionate nature in the bosom profound of a happy nothingness and worldly scorn delivered into my mysterious rest so today satyavan is in my possession but then soon you too shall know that thy heart has no anchor delivered into my mysterious rest one with my fathomless nahi all forget so i will be there zero and everything will be forgotten then 
forget thy foolish spirits waste of foes forget the very circle of thy birth so all these rounds of birth and life forget about that forget the joy and the struggle and the pain the way spiritual quest which first began when worlds broke forth like clusters of firefly fire flower and great burning toss void through the sky of mind and time and its seasons crawled across the wall and souls emerged into mortality see these are very very powerful occult lines very deep very occult and time and its eons crawl across the vast so emerge into mortality the vague spiritual quest how did it happen vague spiritual quest which first began when worlds broke forth like lustrous clusters of fire flowers and great burning thoughts voice to the sky of mind forget all that forget all that forget thy fool spirits fools forget the very circle of thy forget the joy see all these lines symmetric forget thy fool spirit forget forget thy fool spirit waste of fool is a perfect iambic line forget the very circle of thy birth here you got a pyrrhic otherwise all i am forget the joy and the struggle there is an epis and the pain see while the earlier constructions in all these three lines is metrically identical suddenly you have variations in meter here you have got all amps here you have got one pyrrhic here you have got an anapist so the monotony is removed forget the fool spirits waste of food forget the very circle of birth forget the joy and the struggle and the pain symmetrically now they are sounding different also Otherwise, the whole thing will become T term, T term, T term, T term, T term. You see, it <laughs> it becomes very monotonous. It's not that metrical variation is important in the poetry of Savitri. The vague spiritual quest, which first began when worlds broke forth like clusters of fire flowers, and great burning thoughts voice to the sky of mind. This is a different line now, metrically. A very beautiful line also, and great burning thoughts. Second foot, and great first. The second foot is burning thoughts, voiced I can read voiced. Third foot to the sky. Fourth foot. of mind which put and great burning thoughts void to sky of mind and great that they am then these three form long short long burning thoughts first is short long and great burning thought void to the sky of mind burning thought that is long short long is called critic so you got am you got a critic you have got a trocky through the sky and anapis and again an am that is how we can build the rhythm of the line and great burning thoughts voice to the sky of my see one could read also and great burning thoughts that is all right now this voice through the sky of mind you can read voice through 
this kind of mind. In other words, this will become a tactile, I am, I am. You follow? Voice, true. But then, that does not give the proper rhythm. If you read and great burning thoughts, voice through the sky of mind. Voice through the sky of mind. The other one, voice to the sky of mind. In other words, this through, you can link up with the previous word or with the next word, yeah. metrically. Both are metrically possible. But the rhythm will not allow this through to be linked up with the previous one. And great burning thoughts, voice through the sky. You would like to read through the sky together. Not voice through the sky of mind. Clusters of uh, higher flowers, all the galaxies and all that. Huh? Yeah, you can say flower, galaxy, five flowers, sky, because words were broke. That is the definition. Yeah. And time, its eons, crawl across the world, and so emerge into mortality. That is how we have come here. So he has now kind of cornered Savitri. <laughs> so, my dear girl, you better go back now, home, and attend to the funeral rites of your dead husband. He is not going to be with you. You go back now, see. <laughs> and so simmers into mortality. So he has kind of traced the entire process of creation and life from the angle of death how the stars came, how things happened, how the great burning thoughts voice of the sky of mind. He has traced from his angle the whole process. But perhaps that could be one angle. That is not all, you see. And therefore Savitri has an answer against that. Okay, uh, let's do one thing. Let's do an exercise. We heard Yama's argument, all along this, etc., etc. Yeah. Yes, what? what way your argument against this? <laughs> Our argument? Yeah. We know he is a liar and he knows. No, but you, has... you had to, you had to, you had to convince me that he is a liar. I have to convince. Convince me. But... You see, he has convinced Savitri. No. Now you have to yes. counter argue. You simply saying that you are a stupid fellow, you are a liar, that doesn't help you. Okay, but as we know, Savitri, she is not so stupid to believe uh, in Yeah, but therefore... <laughs> she has a soul. No, I, I, for a moment... She knows for, that he is for a, for, a mo for a moment, for a moment, we ignore Savitri totally. And this is the argument put forward. What be your counter-argument? Oh, many. Yeah, such as... Oh. Such as? <laughs> oh, we will we go through and each one has a counter-argument. Is it not? Each one almost has a counter-argument. No, but how? He sees things like this. No, he is giving you the entire picture now. Yeah, yeah, but only from this no, no, view. No, but then, then... You look from another aspect and you see... No, 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 I want your argument against these points which yeah, is raised. No, it's simply saying... Many, 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 many things are true also. Many things are true. What he says is not wrong also. No, no he, he basically he is presenting his picture and uh, he is saying, look, all that is all vain. It's your passion, your flesh, your mind. It is that which is not true. It's not wrong. He is presenting only one way. Yes. No, but then what is your way? I want argument again. <laughs> You forget for a moment, Savitri. What will be your answer? Shall we go through and give you uh, my answer? Yeah. Okay. If you forget Savitri, if I forget Savitri, I forget you, you never knew what is love. <laughs> 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 you almost did. Yeah. You almost did. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You see, for instance, he says, forget thy fruitless spirits, waste of force. That doesn't need to say for... Yeah, I mean, you're not able to achieve anything. Avatars have come, avatars have gone, rishis have come, rishis have gone, nothing has happened, nothing has happened, nothing has happened. So forget all the fruitless. It's all fruitless. Emerge into mortality. That doesn't know why. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't know why. He, he thinks this is the whole thing. But that's only the first the beginning of the chapter. The book is much longer. He doesn't know why. He and he doesn't know what, what comes later. He has no idea. He thinks things end here. But no, I don't end don't end. Understand. No, he doesn't so, see. But this is but his he job. Know why he he doesn't know why he's there and what is water. He's taking care of soul, but he doesn't know why. Yeah, exactly. You see, his whole argument is basically, look, times have passed on, moved on, aliens has rolled on, etc., etc., into the endlessness of all that thing. Yeah. And ultimately, what has happened emerged? Nothing, only mortality. Yeah. Nothing will happen. Mort That's mortality. 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 Now, that is, a, because he sees that in time, even the aliens have rolled on, nothing has happened. Exactly. Yeah. He, he sees, it's a fact. But it's a fact. He is a fact. And I think he know. He doesn't. He know. He know because uh, let me completely include this. Okay. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> a few days ago we were reading Mark and read this one. And he told me, Mark, look, he started the chapter by saying something. I am speaking about the dead son. And a few lines after he changed his mind. He first reject all immortality. After, he recognized it. But everyone, he recognized this thing. It means he knows. He knows very well. But his job is to avoid the human being to be immortal. That's all. Because he is the God of the death. It's normal to do his job like this. But I don't think he is ignored. He knows. Did you see what he heard to him? He knows. He spoke about immortality. Yes, but he said to Kavita, you cannot get it, you will be happy, but he didn't ignore the immortality. So, it's, it's what we learned in the beginning also. You see, the point is, he has put forward his occult logic. See? His occult logic, yeah. occult working of things, he has put forward. Savitri has answered also. But nothing has happened. Immediately Savitri has answered, nothing has happened. Because still the soul of Satyavan is in the possession of death. So whatever your argument be against this, they are futile. Mm. Okay. It's just an intellectual discussion. <laughs> still no the meaning. soul is with him. No meaning. Yeah, but I think he may have to change all the... Yeah, nothing is going to change, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is going to change, you see. So, he, his soul, he is still in his possession and she has not, whatever she is going to argue against all that he has said, Savitri is not going to get back the soul of Satyavan. No, no, of course. <laughs> but he has no choice. But he has no choice. So, therefore, therefore, what is the point in all these arguments? So, you see, yeah. 
But Savitri replied to the dark power, a dangerous music now thou finds, O death, melting the speech into harmonious pain. <laughs> and flutes alluringly to tired hold, thy pauses mingle with sad strains of truth. So what he is doing is, according to Savitri, he is mixing up falsehood with truth. What you are saying is not wrong, but it is also mixed up with falsehood. I agree what you are saying. Now, therefore, first what she has to do is to counter-argue against his falsehoods. and establish the strains of truth. So her argument should proceed along two lines. Along two lines. First, remove all that is false in his speech and give the true meaning to what is truth in what he said. So her argument should be kind of unfolding itself on these two fronts. This, 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 no, 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 no. This, 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 but this way, this way, this way. But I forbid a voice to slay my soul. I forbid. Savit is not going to eat. A small soul could have succumbed. And a small soul could have been slain by all that he has said, he has that power. My love is not a hunger. That is the first thing she is making. Yes. Look, you have been talking of my glands, my nerves, my flesh, my cells, and all that kind of thing. <laughs> my love is not. So that is what she is trying to dispel, the falsehood part of it. My love is not a hunger of the heart. My love is not a craving of the flesh. It came to me from God to God return. So that is the truth. That is the truth, you see. It came to me from God to God return. Now, this line we have seen in many contexts worded differently. From Ananda we come to Ananda we go. That is the Upanishadic line. From Ananda we come to Ananda we go. In this manner, he is repeating, she is repeating the Upanishadic line. She has read Taittiriya Upanishad and she is, <laughs> she is uh, rephrasing Taittiriya Upanishad by saying, from God we came to God we go. Rephrasing, you see. Even in all that life and man have marred, the whisper of divinity still is heard. A breath is felt from the eternal spears. So here also we breathe heavenly air sometime. Allowed by heaven and wonderful to man, a sweet fire of passion chants to love. A sweet fire rhythm, the passion chants to love. Sweet fire rhythm, the passion chants to love. See, that is the ananda everywhere. There is a hope in its wild, infinite cry. It rings with calling from forgotten highs. And when its trains are hushed to high winged souls, in the Empyrean, his burning breath survives beyond the rapturous core of sun that flames forever in skies unseen. A voice of eternal ecstasy. Now, Savitri could have made a kind of a quick routine answer. Look, you're talking of flesh and nerves and all that. It's all wrong. You are not understanding this thing, that thing, you see. 
she could have made a very quick routine answer, rebuttal of every point by saying, no, 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 this is not like this, this is not like that, etc. etc. She could have line by line, point by point, rebutted all that he was seeing. And that would have been a sort of a routine reply of Savitri to death. But Savitri is not giving that routine reply. She is also bringing out the awkward depths of all that he is speaking of. So in that sense, it is not an argument against a counter, it's not a counter argument against an argument. She is not just arguing. Had she been simply counter arguing, there would have been a routine reply. As children quarrel with each other and answer is nothing. It's not that kind of way. What she is doing is, she is bringing out something deeper, something awkward, something more powerful. And it is that which is really more impressive, more significant. There is a hope in his wild, infinite cry. That could be a routine reply. It rings with calling from forgotten heights. That could also be a routine reply. And when its strains are hushed to high-winged souls in their empyrean, its burning breath survives beyond the rapturous core of sun. That is not routine. That is the occult. Their empyrean, its burning breath survives beyond. Burning breath surviving beyond. The rapturous core of suns, that is the occult part of it. And it is that really which gives a kind of a weight to what she is seeing. So she's not making, see, while she is making at times a sort of routine reply to death, there is a hope, is it is it all that kind of thing. She burning breath survives beyond. Now that is something deeper, something which comes from the depths of her soul, perhaps which is not known to death also. The rapturous core of suns. She is going to the center of the sun and find Ananda, rapture there. That flame forever pure in skies unseen. That is the awful part of it, you see. That is the awful part of it. A voice of the eternal ecstasy. That is the flaming of the... There is something in the core of the sun he talks of suns, rapturous core of the suns. I told you there are how many? 56 occurrences of plural suns in Savitri. <laughs> we know only one single sun. There are stars. There are stars. But here, the suns. Sun, as I told you earlier also, it is the creative power of every aspect of the spirit's expression. The sun of beauty, the sun of joy, the sun of love, the sun of power. You see, all these are suns, each one expressing itself. What is there in the core of the suns? Rapture, ananda. It is out of that the creative expression comes out constantly, you see. Now, this is the occult part, occult depth of Savitri's reply. Mm -hmm. That flame forever pure in skies unseen. Obviously, you don't know. All the suns are there burning. The sun of rapture, sun of beauty, sun of truth, sun of love, sun of power, sun of ecstasy, whatever you want to call them. They are there. We don't see them in what sky they are burning. But it is that which is a voice of the eternal ecstasy. One day, I shall behold my great, sweet world, put off the dire disguises of the gods, unveil from terror and disrobe from sin. Disrobe from sin. This world, this sweet world, is robed with sin. 
at a moment and she says that one day i will come and take away the sin from the world what is the sin this world has committed that's why he was playing this role because he knows this <laughs> Avoid it. Yeah. What is sin that I have committed that I am here? My sin is that I entered, disturbed, perturbed, stirred up in conscience. That is my sin. That sin has to go away. One day, the terror and disrobe from sin. Put out the dad, these guys have to go. I can't do that. But Savitri has come to do that, to remove the sin from our souls. We have seen last time, earlier also, no? Savitri committed two sins. The original sin of entering into conscience. And the second sin, the last sin of bringing down divine here. <laughs> I have come for that. I will disrobe the world from that sin. She is asserting again, you see. One day I shall behold that great, sweet world. My great, sweet world put off the dire disguise of the gods. The gods have put on this disguise and veiled from terror and disrobe from sin. Appeased, we shall draw near our mother's face. When the sin is gone, then only we can go closer to our mother. We shall cast our candid souls upon her lap. Now that is the important thing. We shall draw near our mother's we shall draw near our mother when we can't draw ourselves to her. We can't do that. We cannot draw ourselves close to our mother. Only when Savitri removes the sin from our soul, then we can draw closer to our mother. She has to do that thing for us, we had to sort of go by what she will do in us. It is she who will disrobe us from our sin, Savitri who will disrobe us from our sin. And only then can we go closer to the mother. So our path to the mother is via Savitri. Read Savitri Delhi early, early in the morning. <laughs> Write Savitri, chant Savitri, sing Savitri, draw painting Savitri. That's what you are doing, no? All of us are doing. <laughs> All of us are doing. Then we can draw ourselves closer to the mother. We shall cast our candid souls upon her lap. Then shall we clasp the ecstasy we chase. Then shall we shudder with a long short cord. Then shall we find heaven's unexpected strain. But this is the condition. Yes. <laughs> this is the condition. One day I shall behold my great sweet world, put out the dire disguise of the gods, unveiled from terror and disrobed from sin. She has to do this work in us. We had to make her do this work in us. We had to make her, her do this work in us. Then only all those glorious things can happen. <laughs>